a beam AB has mass M and length 2A. The beam rests in equilibrium with A on a rough horizontal ground, so friction, and B against a smooth vertical wall, and so no friction. The beam is inclined to the horizontal at angle theta, as shown in figure two. The coefficient of friction between the beam and the ground is mu. The beam is modeled as a uniform rod, so the weight acts halfway along, so A, the distance A on each side. Let's just draw that on. So the weight, the weight is mg, the mass is m, so the weight is mg, and it's uniform, so it's going to be acting A along A here and A here on the other side. Uniform rod resting in a vertical plane perpendicular to the wall. So let's just draw on all the forces. So we've got this weight here. We're going to have a normal reaction at A, so reaction at A, the normal reaction at B. Now the wall was smooth, but the ground was rough. So we're going to have a friction force opposing the motion. They are all of the forces, and we need to use the model to show that mu is bigger or equal to half cot theta. So friction isn't necessarily taking its maximum value, so it's going to be less than or equal to mu r. So friction's maximum value is mu r, that's the biggest thing it can be, but that's if it was moving or if it was in limiting equilibrium. It doesn't say that, it just says it's in equilibrium. So friction might not have to take that value, it only takes the value it needs to resist the motion. So for this question we can use forces up equal forces down, forces left equal forces right, and we can take moments. And well, we've only got one force going up, one force going down. So we can straight away say that the reaction at A forces up equals mg, forces down. And forces to the left, the reaction at B, equal forces to the right, friction. So we can say that reaction at A equals mg, reaction at B equals friction, but we're going to also have to take moments to get to find mu in terms of theta. So reaction at B is the same as friction, so I can change this to friction, and reaction at A I can change to mg. So I need to get friction. It doesn't matter where I take moments from. The easiest would be to take moments about A because I will eliminate these two forces and only have two forces left in the question. If I took moments from any other point, there'll be three forces left in the question. So let's take moments about A. So clockwise moments equals anti-clockwise moments. So the moment is the distance, so the distance from, taking moments about A, so the distance from A times the perpendicular force. And let me just write where the, the angle's on as well. So this angle here is 90 minus theta. So theta is this one. And we've got alternate angles here, this angle is theta. So clockwise moments, we've got the distance is A and the force is mg cos theta. That's the only clockwise moment, that equals the anti-clockwise moments, which is 2A times friction sine theta. 
2a times friction sine theta. We need to get, well, mu by itself. So we're going to have to change friction into mu r. But the problem with that is we don't know that friction's taking its maximum value. Friction is less than or equal to mu r. So if we change friction into mu r, if we say 2a times mu r sine theta, we might have made this side bigger because friction isn't necessarily taking its maximum value. So if this side could be too big, this side is going to be less than or equal to it. So it could take its maximum value, but it could be something less than that. So A times Mg cos theta is less than or equal to 2A times mu R sine theta. Because friction is less than or equal to mu R. So we have an R, that was R as in RA, which is MG. So let's make that sure that's RA, and we can change that into MG as well. So we've got 2A times mu times MG sine theta equals A MG cos theta. Now we've got A on both sides, we can divide both sides by A, and there we go. We've got MG on both sides, divide both sides by MG. And we wanted cot, didn't we? Half cot theta. So cot is cos theta, cot theta is cos theta over sine theta. So divide both sides by sine theta, and we'll get cot theta is less than or equal to 2 mu. And we just need to half both sides. Half of cot theta is less than or equal to mu. That's what we wanted. We wanted mu is bigger or equal to half cot theta. It's just written the other way around. A horizontal force, magnitude kmg, where k is a constant, is now applied to the beam at A. This force acts in a direction perpendicular to the wall, towards the wall. So in the direction, we've got friction going here. Given that tan theta is 5 over 4, mu is a half, and the beam is now in limiting equilibrium. So now friction is equal to mu r. Use the model to find the value of k. So we've got a new force on the diagram. So we're going to have to we're going to have to change it. So what do we have now? We've got reaction at B, reaction at A. We've got this new force kmg which is going towards the wall. So it's in limited equilibrium. So friction is probably going to be opposing that. So that's now taking the value of mu r, the maximum value of friction, mu times the reaction at A, that is. And they are now all of our forces. We now know mu is actually a half. So I can change this to half times the reaction at A. And theta is 5 over 4. And we can use that to find cos theta and sine theta. So tan theta is 5 over 4. So if we've got a right angle triangle, This is theta. Tan is toa, opposite 
over adjacent. So we can find the hypotenuse. So using Pythagoras, so the hypotenuse is a square root of 5 squared plus 4 squared. which is square root 41. So cos theta is the adjacent over hypotenuse, 4 over root 41, and sine theta is the opposite over hypotenuse, 5 over square root 41. We need to find the value of k. So we could forces up that equal forces down still works. So the reaction A is still Mg. So forces up equal forces down. So the reaction A is still equal to Mg. So this is Mg. That means this is half of Mg. We don't know the reaction at B. We've got half mg, kmg, and reaction at B. Let's do forces left equal forces right, and then take moments about A. So forces left equal forces right. Forces left equal forces right. So we have reaction at B, plus half mg equals kmg. So the reaction at B, we can say is kmg minus half mg. And then if we take moments about A, we've only got two forces in the question. And we should get K from that. So take moments about A. So clockwise moments equal anti-clockwise moments. Clockwise, we've got A times Mg cos theta. A times Mg cos theta equal anti-clockwise moments. So 2A times reaction at B sine theta. 2A times the reaction at B sine theta. We can change the reaction at B into this and change cos theta and sine theta into 4 over root 41 and 5 over root 41. So we've got A M G times 4 over square root 41 equals 2a times kmg minus half mg times sine theta, which is 5 over root 41. Let's, tie, let's divide through by a times through by square root 41 and then divide through by mg. There's not much left now, so we've got just 4 left on the left side, and we've got 2, 2 times 5, which is 10, times k minus a half. Expand the bracket, so 4 equals 10k minus 5. Add 5 to both sides and divide by 10. So k is 9 temps.